Welcome to the Dog Psychology Podcast with Todd and Art. Welcome to the Dog Psychology Podcast with Todd and Art. Good and, morning, uh, good Art. Morning. Good morning. It is morning. Usually we do yeah. the afternoons. We're doing mornings today. I actually yeah, like these mornings, morning. by the way. Why? A little more fresh? Uh, I don't feel as rushed. I mean, even though I'm going to be rushed because I have to take the, the boys to school today. Um, and so as soon as we're done, I'm just going to walk them over to school. But it's just down the street, so it's not too far. Put backpacks on them, make it a little bit harder. Yeah. <laughs> Focus, boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, hey, so I just got done doing my first workshop at, at Royal Canine with Melina. Oh, no kidding. Uh, so How'd it go? Amazing, dude. It was, it was a two-day workshop. It was absolutely amazing. And I, I, I did something that no one, uh, I guess, dares to do. I let people film, you know, uh, and a lot of people are very particular about that because I know things can be taken out of context, but there's nothing for, like, I mean, I guess there are always ways to be things to be taken out of context, but I also did a virtual spot. So we actually had live stream, live stream the whole thing. Uh, and How many was, people were there in person? Uh, I think we had 32 people. Nice. I had uh, 10 working spots. I'm sorry, 10, 11 working spots and uh, seven, 16 audit spots. And then we had 17 virtual spots. So it went really well. Like the, the, the live stream that we did was, I like, couldn't ask for anything better. Adam did an amazing job, who also produces the podcast. <laughs> he produced the whole thing. Uh, it was awesome, dude. It was like people really enjoyed it. I, you know, it's my first time doing it, so you never know. Like people are gonna like it, you know. And so, but I, I mean, people stuck around at the end. It was just like, wow, this was absolutely amazing. Like we can't wait for you to come back. So it was good, man. I was, I was really, um, it was, it was really, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I, I enjoy doing workshops. I haven't done one on my own like that for quite some time. I did one up at uh, Liz's place. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I enjoy them. I. Uh, I like the format and, you know, we've done so many, you know, and I mean, I essentially produce the thing with Caesar's thing in a sense yeah. by, you know, organizing it that in my, and I had to do a two day one with him and now I had to make it. So I had to break down the one that we do into two days. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, it, it basically gives you an idea of how to create like this wheel where you can kind of turn them through a whole series of events that all, everything kind of connects to the next thing that you're doing and so forth. That's yeah. good. Glad that it went well. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, you know, I start, I've started letting people, um, we'll start doing like the beginning of like a leash lesson. And I'll say, do you have your phone? And they'll, yeah, I go here, go ahead and tape it, get next here so you can see the timing or whatnot. But then I ask for two things. One, don't share it and give it to me when we're done. Or I'll sometimes do it in reverse because then I have that as, as um, you know, content to use to teach yeah. Yeah. or something to that effect. But yeah, and that's I, the other I, thing. We have eight hours of content. That, that's I mean, crazy. Yeah. yeah and, that, and you know, that, that's the thing is that everybody is waiting for this big, huge aha moment to learn from. And their big moments, tiny. Yeah. And, you know, there's a million and in a, a two day workshop, think of how many little moments could be, you know, in that, that it's that one thing that somebody needs. Yeah. And it's tiny. It's the timing. It's something like, <clears throat> it's something like that, you know, something basic. That's actually something we could talk about too, is timing and all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where a lot of good technical people are messing up. Their timing's off. And so they're like, why does my dog always get a foot in front? Well, because you pull the leash right there. <laughs> and by the way, also, I also want to make note of something. So like, I know when we, like, you, we live with the pressure, like, you know, when we're around Caesar and things like that, like how he gets like these results, you know what I mean? And so you have, you live with this pressure, like you have to get these results. But I think what my, my me personally, my biggest takeaway was that we had this one dog, uh, it's like a, one of those street dogs. And when you get those, those like Mexican street dogs, they're very like, independent like shiba inus are like that basenjis are also like that they don't um, need humans and they know it man. right and they just they and my point that i was making i was like man this dog is just going through the motions it knows how to do all the things but mm -hmm. doesn't know how to connect and so it was a it was a big struggle and i was working this dog working it working it working it just would not connect i was like i just need more time like, i just need time to, to do this you know uh, and I was, I felt bad. I was like, man, I just felt like I didn't get anywhere with this dog. Uh, and so it starts to like, in the back of your mind, like, oh, I feel really bad for the owner. You know, she spent all this money and, you know, all this stuff. but at the end of it, she's like, this was amazing. Like, I would love this. Like, I want to do this again. Like she was like, it was so eye opening and seeing you work with all the other dogs. So it was really cool, you know, cause it, that pressure is in the, back, in the back of your mind, you know? Dude, when I go down to Fort Lauderdale, the amount of money that they charge and people show up and they're like, they're like, you're the savior of what's a, like you're the end all if it doesn't you know what i mean and it's like if 
oh, that's you can't too. make changes, then oh, the, and it is. It's a ton of pressure. It's it's good and bad. You know, I think we talked one time, and and you were talking about putting a lot of pressure on yourself, and I'm like, well, it's good and it's bad. I go, if you yeah. don't have that, it means you don't care enough. But if you kind of live and die by that pressure, then it it really takes a lot from you as a human because it is a it's a responsibility. Yeah, but that's that's good, and it's true. You know, those connection cases are really difficult, and but it's also your perspective of success sometimes too. Yeah. You know, we have a I think a maybe a broader, greater expectation of what you're trying to accomplish in 48 hours, and you know, the humans, the other, the clients might be a lot smaller than that. Yeah, I just want to make a real quick like uh, shout out to Melina who just at the Royal Canine and Gina. Uh, just open up their doors for me to have it. It was, it was, it was awesome, dude. Like, I can't wait to do that. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, it was cool. All right. Do you want to talk, talk about the, the video? You, you, what do you want to do? Yeah, let's, um, so what I, the <clears throat> topic for today that I wanted to do was avoidance and, and particularly like this, per, mm. this type of avoidance where, you know, I, I one of the first three things, usually the first two people ask is, or request, I want my dog to listen better. And if you ask more details to that, like, what do you mean? Where do you want your dog to listen better? You'll find out it's usually something, you know, I want to, I call my dog in the backyard and they ignore me and they will go the other way. And people always follow that up with, I know they know type mm -hmm. of stuff. And so I really want to talk about avoidance and how, since we're vocal creatures and insist on doing the listening thing, how we can really create the inadvertent up is down, left is right, you know, black is white type of thing where you call your dog and they walk that way. And it looks intentional. Yeah. And I mean, in some way, you know, and I, I got a great question from somebody the other day about avoidance is they're like a dominant avoidance where, you know, the, there's a, they're avoiding you out of, out of a, different reason. So I define avoidance as lack of trust, lack of certainty, lack of knowing, right? So if I don't trust the situation, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not certain, you know, that's obvious animalistic. Uh, the best way I describe that is you walk into a, a dark parking structure at night, right? And you also, you get that, whoa, whoa. And you look around, you have that lack of certainty of wanting to move forward into that dark space or into that uncertain space. <laughs> that's, that's the feeling. Uh, lack of knowing is <clears throat> lack of knowing how to do something, but you're being pushed into it, right? Forced into it almost. So the lack of knowing makes you retreat. So to me, that's the, the, the base reasons for it. And then I was asked, can it happen out of a more defiant reason? I tend to never want it to be that because that, that uh, stubborn part of it, I think, makes everybody respond poorly. Mm -hmm. And then you compound the problem, kind of like right. we see in this video. So that's what I uh, want to talk about with the avoidance. How do you define it, Art? The same way, like un when you when you said uh, uncertainty, you know, for avoidance, you know, just like unsure. Uh, again, I'm going to quote Lynn. Lynn has a quote that says, "If you're not sure, make sure." Right, and so if you're not sure, you're going to avoid it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, that's like the big thing is like because they they do that. Like I'm not sure. I don't really know. Like how how can we make sure? And so you know, which we can talk about you know after watching this video. Uh, and by the way, this video we're gonna we're gonna play. Uh, some of you might, like, if you're listening to where it's just an uh, audio stream, um, we can put the link in the, in the show notes and so you guys can check it out, check, check the video out, but you can also just listen to it and you can hear. Oh yeah. It's, it's pretty clear on what's happening. Yeah. And just, it's like two yellow labs that are like, um, or white labs they look like who are jumping in the swimming pool and the owner's like trying to call them out of the swimming pool and they just keep jumping. It's pretty funny. Like how they're like diving into the pool. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I got. I think everybody it. can relate to the lady too. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, everybody can relate to the way this lady's. You know. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I practiced this earlier. Let's see. This works. Can you see it? Yep, I can. Okay. Now I can't do a full screen because it's the it's a it's a short uh, YouTube okay. short. Okay. But we'll go ahead and play it. And let me know if you can hear it. By the way. Okay. Buster, I'm yep. really gonna Buster. Come here. Come here. Come here, you little shit. <laughs> Be a good boy for once in your life. Are you done? Come here. Come here. Buster. Buster Henry. Buster. Come here. Hey, hey. That's what's my towel. Don't you dare. Buster. 
Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> now the dad's there. Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, wait, not yet. Not yet. You alone? Hey, are you ready to come in? Oh. There's Let's the go, odor. Go. That's the dad. Let's go. Go. Come on. Come on. Go here. Your mommy's right. Good drive. Come over. No, sir. Buster. Get over here now. Buster. Okay. Well, hey Art, it was kind of choppy when it was playing. Would it was it smooth when on when they'll see it? Uh well, this is the first time that we've actually done it, so I don't really know. All right, because I want the, the the timing of it is uh is what's interesting. So, what do you see, Art? I mean, what obviously it's funny, it's entertaining. The dogs um are not listening. Yeah. <laughs> to mom. And if, if this was somebody that had called you up and, and sent you this video, what would you tell them? How would you break this down for them? Yeah. So uh, the first thing that I, that I, that, I mean, there's a lot of things I see, obviously, but uh, one of the things that I always share with people is that, you know, she's obviously very frustrated, right? You know, you, right. you hear the frustration in her voice. And in my opinion, again, I don't have anything to really, this is just some, something that I've always experienced is that dogs don't interpret, interp, interpret, uh, frustration, human frustration as that they interpret as excitement. Yep. And so they get more excited and then we get more frustrated. And so it's just this ongoing cycle. Of, Can you be more clear, you? like excitement is play, right? They, they literally see you as a toy at that point. Right. And it's so like, that's why when I tell people don't say anything, and I say that I do that for a reason because, or change the way you say it because uh, there's definitely a frustrated energy that's, that's portrayed, that's, it's, that's vocalized. And the dogs, even think about it, like when a dog is barking, they have that similar energy to it, right? So in the, when the dog sees it, when they translate, oh, you're getting excited too? Like, it's almost like they're, they're, they're joining in with them. You know, it's like almost we reinforce the thing that we didn't want unintentionally because in the human world, we see it as like, why won't you listen to me? Right. And, and, and then when the, 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 the father, the husband comes out, he's like, come on, let's go. And the other thing, like towards the end, you, you notice how he steers them. Like he has very clear direction on, because he go, the other dog starts to run back. He's like, hey, no. And, and he, he moves back. out. Yeah, he, he actually them. moves out a little bit. Yeah, he, he like steers the dog. And so I, those... I would like to see the ending though, because that dog still could have turned and ran and jumped in the pool. Oh, for sure. Right at that moment from dad, because I mean, it cut out. He had definitely had more control of the first one. The first one came right in, but that second dog is well programmed in that. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And then the other thing is like, you know, uh, how uh, she's like, they, they don't listen to me, but I mean, there's, you know, the first thing I would do is put a leash on like a long line or something and, you know, work on that. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple, honestly, like it's, it's a, not simple fix. It's, it's a, there's two things like, what is, how does a dog interpret what you want? Right. What does that mean yep. to the dog? Uh, the, 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 you know, she was very, like I said, her, her energy was like, go. Hey. So now those words mean just go keep jumping in the pool. Yeah. We're going to have fun, you know? And that's the part I think that they have a hard time with, right? I, this goes back to, I've said it in, in the podcast before where, Behavior is mechanical, but emotions aren't. And if you don't understand your emotions, then behavior doesn't care. So her frustration, to your point, is making the dogs excited and run away from her. And then the mechanical part of that is as they're running away from her, she's introducing the sounds hey, that hey, she hey. wants to mean come this way, but she's introducing them when they're running away. So the mechanical part of the of this problem is that if you introduce what people call commands or just a sound you got to introduce it when the dog is physically doing it properly otherwise you misprogram the brain it's just like a code you know and mm -hmm. and that's the part that when you're in your emotional self your frustrated self you don't care to or refuse or are incapable of seeing and then every repetition that lady's doing that is making her really good <laughs> getting those dogs to jump in the pool. Yeah. And that's the part that, yeah, it, it's very difficult until people can claim that part of the whole situation that you can then get them to understand why, okay, look, we need to put a long line on the dog and we need to get the dog walking towards you and you need to be positive about it. You know, that you taught that. Yeah. And that's the hardest part for people, I think, to understand is the recognition that you taught somewhat what you see. So the only way to unteach it is to stop your teaching style. And you know, this, this is why I tell people, by the way, like, because they was like, 
you're not talking to my dog. Like when I'm working, I'm like, because yeah. there's, and it's not that, because we're, we're, we can talk about timing because the timing of everything is, is you know, equally as important. And there's a good chance that people are going to use words at the wrong time. So I say, just, just, just take it out. It takes that room for error out, right? So, what, is, what is the wrong time? What's the wrong time and the right time? Well, let, let's say they, you know, as using this video, if the dog was running away and they say, good boy, right? Uh, that, that sounds very obvious. Like you wouldn't say good boy when they're running away, but people are doing that because mentally the dog could be running away and they say, good boy. And the dog is not there. And that, that's the thing I feel that is different from like obedience and, and dog psychology is that I always talk about how I want the mind and body and spirit to be in sync with each other. Whereas obedience is like, they give you a physical action, like a sit or a down. Yeah. But mentally, they're still really, really excited. So how we can combine the both is co combine both is like you work them or walk them or do something, and then you start introducing the let's say sit and they sit down or lay down. But it also has the relaxation. And then we say, "Good boy," you know. And so for me, it's always about how can I connect with this animal on a very like a physical, mental, emotional level that's not the excitement, that's not the uh, the bad time, so to speak. So like at the end of doing all these things, I always think about like, it's very primal in the dog world. Like, you know, from going back when, when, you know, they used to go and hunt with the humans and at the end they had their feast. So they did all these things and then they got fed. So if that's what you, like for me, like I'll work the dog, work, 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 introduce whatever we're trying to do and what we're trying to create. And then let's say I have them lay down. Then I say, I feed them at that moment, meaning feed right. them with the thing. And so it's, it, it it takes, it's very primal for the dog to, uh, you know, that's very still ingrained in their minds. You know what I mean? So that's, we still do the same thing as like how they used to do it like with feeding, but we're using, we're feeding them our energy, our calmness, all those things, you know? How would you help this lady in the video when you say use a long line? So to me, I, I can see this very easy because I mean, I see things kind of just like, all right, categ almost categorical at this point where, you know, this is fight, flight, avoidance, low, medium, high. You know, you can see that the, obviously the energy is wrong. It's obviously that her frustration is there. Um, but how about for the people that need, need like the more, I don't know if you want to call it technical side, like they need to go, what are the steps Art? take, what do I need to do? I mean, yeah. and you've got them to understand that you got to, all right, if I can get you to stop talking and chill the fuck out, step one, we're, we're way ahead of the curve because at least now you're not joining in. You're not, you know, you're not stirring the pot you're not making the excitement worse with these dogs yeah um, how uh, how would you would you start in the pool or would you start so, like over somewhere else where it's easier to get this link of moving back towards me and we're going to make that we're going to celebrate you moving towards me i don't want you to perceive we're celebrating you running away from me it's almost what it looks like in the video you know yeah Man. And those dogs are funny, by the way. Like, I mean, they, oh, they're living their best life. When that yeah. dog had the towel and it rolled into the pool, yeah. <laughs> that's where you know that dog's just in a joyous state. I mean, that's just yeah. pure. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I also, I don't want to take that away either. But I just oh. think, you know, because I, oh. I think sometimes people are like will look at that and like, oh, they're being these are just happy-go-lucky dogs that she could have picked her moment too. She could have just yeah. let that go for five minutes, gone to the edge of the pool, and created a better, a better, you know, understanding and connection to end that. Yeah. So the way I would do it is, is, uh, you know, cause we always see things as patterns. What, what is the pattern, you know, what does right. that suggest? How, what does this look like? Uh, and depending on the situation, but I actually would, would put a long line and I would actually let the dog go in the pool mm -hmm. and at that moment, bring it out. Come on, let's go inside. So the let, let's go inside. So, in, but I'm also taking away the owner's, um, frustration of, of, yeah. of, come on, let's go, let's go. And the dogs are running away. So now we've created, what do those words mean? Come on, we're going to go inside. So I'll take them from the pool all the way in. Go back out, put him in the pool, let him swim around. You know, well, I'm still kind of just hanging, like kind of just hanging on the pool, hanging on to the long line, bring him up to the steps. Come on, let's go. So I'm creating the pattern exactly the way I want it to look like. So then I could step back further, like, come on, whatever words we're going to use, whistle, let's go, come on. Kind of reel them in, come on. And then we go all the way inside. So I'm trying to re recreate the whole scenario, how I want it to look like, so that when, you know, when I use the leash as little as possible, but as much as I need, I use the leash as long as I need until I don't need yeah. it anymore. So then eventually their dog's like, oh, I'm picking up on this. Would and you see this whole thing as a recall issue or an avoidance issue or like kind of wrapped well, into it's, one? It's a both. It obviously yeah. is both. And by the way, I, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because avoidance, people talk about the uncertainty, right? And it, it can, people can see it as an as a unsure body language. Mm -hmm. They were totally avoiding her, but in a happy-go-lucky state, right? And so that's really important to, 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 to 
to look at because they are avoiding, but not in the way that most or what we talk about or what we see, you know, avoidant, right? To me, that looks a lot like when the dog grabs the sock inside and starts running around in the living room and you start chasing it. That just that dog just has the option of a pool, you know? So it's like that that's the game avoidance that you're describing, right? Lynn you're has triggering a- like a playful avoidance. Um because it's still, you know, at the same time, there is a misinterpretation. The dog's misinterpreting your messaging yeah. um, or your intention because you obviously right. want something different. Uh, and so, but yeah, the dog's definitely not in an unsure. And it's not in an energetic unsure state. It could be argued, if you will, if, it, if it's certain on what it, on what she wants. Yeah. You know? Lynn has a, a rule. It's... um. Uh, I want to think it's number three. I think it's number four. Uh, God, I forgot his number. It's been a while since I looked at this. But anyways, rule, the one of the rules is uh, I think it's number four. It's um, excitement leads to disregard, right? And that was one of the things you say. And I yeah, had yeah. I had a long discussion with him because I said I said, well, it's not only excitement that the dogs will disregard you, right? If they're an avoidant, they'll disregard you. If they're flighting, they'll disregard you. So he actually changed it. He says. Uh, excitement and any emotional arousal will lead to disregard. So I, I actually like that he changed that because I was like, it's not only excitement. Uh, right. And so he, I brought that up to me and he changed it. Thanks to me. You're welcome, Lynn. <laughs> it's like that on NCIS, it's Gibbs 20 rules. It's the same thing. <laughs> or Jordan Peterson's 12 Jordan rules. Jordan Peterson's 12 rules. Um, I think too that, uh, you know, you get asked a lot about how to get my dog to come to me more. Uh, I'm all about, teaching that you have to receive it, you know, so it's not like a word. What's the most receiving sounds that come off of you? Like you just said earlier, like, is it whistling all of this? I actually have, you know, you open your arms. People want to, Hey, come here. And no, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the one bit of uncertainty you can see in almost all recall failure. And then the, again, the misprogramming sets in and it goes back to behavior. The aspect of behavior being mechanical, I think is important because it's just going to happen no matter what. So that's why we don't talk. And the end of the day, I don't talk because I'm not going to talk to the wrong brain. Cell. I'm not going to talk to the wrong thing. Yeah. And, and it's more important about talking to if I'm using a word, is it time to what the dog is doing? Right. If I'm offering something and, you know, warm and uh, reinforcing, am I, am I doing it at the right calm point in the dog or happy go lucky if that was I was trying to create? Like, am I able to time my language to what we're doing properly? And, you know, that's an aspect of timing that's not talked about much, but the timing of our of our conversation is that's what's difficult with dogs because people will detach for four seconds and come back and that's two or three moments for a dog you know they've already moved on to something completely different or you uh, somebody was i had a a client from an island uh one of the island nations and they're like you know they were taught and training that if you see an accident on the ground you bring your dog over to it and you put their nose in it mm. you know that that timing part of things being able to get your dog to understand it in the moment is yeah. uh lost on people we don't we're not in the moment very well i and still so, get asked that question too by the way what's up i i get asked that question should you put your nose in the dog's nose in the pee and poo mm-hmm. and i'm like well, well this goes back to people's perception of a dog's abilities with memory yeah and that's why that you know my dog is smart is really not fair to the dog i really I really don't like that phrase. My dog is so smart. I understand it's going to hurt the dog when an owner says that because they're interpreting things that the dog can do that they can't, and they're not really honing in on the dog's intelligence, which is right. like I believe it's a social i q mm-hmm. I mean a dog's intelligence is that they can look into a social situation and break it down better than we can uh, they're not looking at what the people want them to see, they're looking through that, right? So, you know, the reason you wear the clothes you wear and the shit you do, the dog goes right through all of that. That's their intelligence. And if you honor that, then you just go, okay, when I'm with my dog, I'm going to pay attention to how I feel and what I'm doing. And if I can do that, I, I'm, I'm smart enough that I can come up with a way to know that this isn't working. Like that lady, not knowing that what she's doing isn't working is the problem. Right. I mean, everything else being equal, it's like, do you not see that on the eighth repetition, the dogs almost perfectly timed to your words, jump in the pool? Yeah. Or I don't know how many times it takes for most people to catch a pattern, but if I get caught three times, I failed. I'm usually going to, you know, twice I feel like, damn it. Mm. But you can see a pattern form pretty quick. You know, somebody gets a dog on a treadmill and the dog walks up and walks to the right and won't go on. You go do it again. 
<laughs> the dog walks up and walks to the right. And you don't see that they know enough to like know that's going to happen. That that recognition of the pattern. And the dogs know you don't know. Speaking of that, by the way, uh, over the weekend during the workshop, that was one of the things that I that I really wanted to hammer in is about you know recognizing patterns. But do you remember Yoshi Clark? She had that black lab at TCW. She's a Japanese woman that that went to uh, TCW probably like two years ago. Um, anyway, so she had she brought her dog and her dog's reactive, and so you know she's been taught in it, and like that's good. Or, you know how when you apply pressure, the dog will sit down. So the dog just knows how to go through the motions, but never yep. really kind of put pieces together, right? But one of the things that I noticed was that he would sit down and he would turn his body and turn his backside to whatever was like the trigger, right? And so I was like, we got we to gotta clean this, this little thing up because what's happening, uh, these are small, I call them micro events. These are micro yep. events that are not reactivity, but it's leading up to the reactivity. I go, if we can't clear. So, so he this, turned his back to what would make him reactive. Yes. So he and went he to a turn around and it would create this, you know? So he like, would turn, so he had his back face to it and then he'd snap around. Yeah. So it's like loading up from, from, from the back side, right? avoidance, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so uh, I was like, look, we have to clean this up. And so then I was like, let me grab the leash, let me grab it. So I started doing it and he would do the same thing with me. I was like, we're going to, we're going to clean this up. And so what I did is I got Bobby, Bobby helped, helped out. And I said, I want you to stand right here. So I brought him up. And so I created like a, like a wall. I do this on fences too. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm creating, when I do this, I want you just to go move back, not to the side. And I did it over and over and over. And then I said, okay, Bobby. So you created like almost like a narrow pathway Correct. so that his body didn't have the option to right. flip. Right. So then I said, look, so when you do this and he stops and now you're in the front. And, you, and my thing is, one thing that I kept saying is like, we're on the same team, right? Me, me and the dog are on the same team. But I want him to know that I have his best interest that I'm going to protect him. So if I move him behind here, don't worry about them. Just worry about me and, and I'll, I'll take care of this. You don't have to worry about that dog over there. I got you. You know, that was one thing I was saying. I got you. I got your back. I got you. But, and I guess, get, and by the way, I was talking in those, in those sense because it's creating the intention so that people can see and hear like what, what is I'm trying to create. Understood. And so it was, it was, it was really interesting because like it's these little moments that yes, it's not the reactivity, but it's the action before the reactivity. And so if we don't take care of these little micro events, the big event, which they're trying to extinguish, I go like, you're not going to. You can't, if, you can't well, you fix the you can't step in after that blow up. Yeah. Happens. You're always yeah. going to get the blow up no matter what. So once the behavior has been practiced yeah. now, what it did, did she recognize that that behavior was happening or, or was she told that that was good that the dog was ignoring? No, I, she wasn't, she wasn't, I don't think she was. Cause I've she, seen that. I just know, think I've no one's her. ever really pointed it out. You know I mean? Okay. Uh, I remember when uh, she brought him to TCW and I remember he, he was uh, pretty rough. He's come a long way, this dog. Like he, she has done, she's been so committed um, to this dog and just like, and he's come a long way. Cause I remember at TCW, he wasn't like super bad, but he was enough to, he was actually, do you remember when we did the go home or the, the take it home and we had, there was, they were on our right side and she brought her other dog, like a big, like golden retriever looking dog. Yes. And then that, so that yeah. dog had never been Those around. Those dogs were very large, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. <laughs> and so, uh, but it was really cool to see her like say, oh, wow, it's these little details really do matter. I'm like, yep, it's, everything is in the details. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the part too that, you know, we did, it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, we talked about patterns and that's the one advantage we have. And if, you know, I'm a big fan of teaching people that you don't necessarily need more information. You want to learn how to read the information in front of you. I mean, because that's what we're using. And to the point you just said, are you able to pull far enough back that you can see, like when the dog goes into an intention state, you can actually see the thought before the action. And if mm -hmm. you can't catch it there, you're ultimately always going to be dealing with the reaction. Mm -hmm. Even if you get amazing at dealing with the reaction, the fact that it still happened means that that's part of the equation. now. And the dog's waiting for you. The dog knows you're going to stop him. They know, they know that they're going to stop, you're going to stop them and they know they're going to stop. But since you don't get ahead of that reaction, they always get it. And avoidance is easy to miss. We talked about it last week with kids. Mm -hmm. Avoidance is seen as a positive because it's not a fight, but yeah. it's not relaxed and it's not surrender. So it, it to me, it's the step <clears throat> in between. I'd love avoidance if I've had a dog that's been a total aggressive mess. Avoidance is great. Because, you know, at least now we're, we've gotten rid of some reaction. Now, you know, he's, he's realizing reaction is not the option. Can we get them to relax from here? And by the way, that's why, that's why rattlesnake avoidance training 
right? And yeah. I want to talk about this because it's something I talked about over the weekend also is that, you know, when we're talking about avoidance, uh, you want the dog to avoid the rattlesnakes for their, for their life. You don't want them to go into an acceptance, right? And so when people, and this is the thing that I see a lot of times when, when people start using e-collars and things like that, yep. that they leave the dog stuck in avoidance. And so yes. they, they see it as better, but it's, it's not better. Because if not you want, if you them- want it, not if you want acceptance, if you live together, you can't do avoidance. If I don't want you to kill something and I can create it, great. But if, if I need you to live in proximity and, and we're going to make contact and be an intimate space, avoidance is the worst thing ever. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the, another huge point when you talk about like, what dog psychology is like, it's all, if I want the dog to become social or whatever, uh, yes, I'll take it through an avoidance. But I have to get into acceptance to become yep. part of the family, you know. And I think that's that's another key point that I think a lot of people really often, uh, you know, when they hire a trainer and let's say they use e collar, the dog is just stuck in avoidance, and and the, the owner sees it, it's a good thing. They're not reacting, but it's because they're stuck in avoidance. You Do you know? know where you can see that a lot is when um, cats with dogs and cats. You know, you'll see an owner think that the dog is all predatory, and the dog's just excited. You know, you bring this thing in, and all of a sudden it, it can't meet it, and all these different things. And you, you can get that a lot. Mm-hmm. So then they start whacking on an e-collar with it. And then the dog avoids the cat, but you can't avoid, you can't avoid family members and it not end up turning into something, Yeah, you know? And that, that, again, that, that avoidance thing is, is I think in my opinion, avoidance, even for trainers is the most difficult energy fights obvious and you can either handle it or not. So you can build a career around dealing with it. Fear is kind of obvious. So you can build a career around that, but avoidance isn't that, that is a, a tricky energy for most people to recognize, understand. It's it's described as stubbornness or sadness, you know. So either way, most people's emotions are off when they deal with it. Um, they don't have enough of a plan, like to really recognize what they're trying to do. So they end up forcing them or letting them do it, mm-hmm. and it, it becomes a very uh, useful tool for the dog at some point. I mean, it's, you get these dogs that can jump five feet high, but they won't jump in a car. Yeah, you can get you know, and it's. It, it's once they realize that my owner can't work past avoidance, you'll see they start to just shut down on everything. (laughs) Also Todd, because uh, when we go inside people's homes, let's say they're like a forward dog. um, And then also we start handling them. There's a, there's an avoidance there. And so people are like, Oh my God, like that's amazing. How did you get my dog to do that? Well, it's not that I did anything. It's just because I'm the thing that's new and different. Right. And now they're kind of like, I'm really unsure. But I tell people, you, we can use this to our advantage. We're going to well, use this. Well, if it's forward, we want to, it's a game of opposites, like we said. And so if you go in and they're forward and then they go, whoa, you're like, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. I yeah. needed that. Yeah. yeah. And I worked with a dog yesterday, by the way. It was a German Shepherd that I, I met back in May of last year. Um, and he was, he was on medication and all this stuff. And he was kind of like a forward dog, German Shepherd, big German Shepherd. Um, and so, you know, we haven't scheduled anything, you know, since then, but I've still been in contact with the owner. Um, and you know, they got him off medication, but I met with him last night and he was totally different off medication. He was more avoidant, but when on medication, he was more forward. Yeah. I think it's confusion. I think they compensate for confusion. And and so I was like, Whoa, I go, this is very different. So, cause like the last time when I met them, I, I kind of, we went to met at a park. I back tied him on with a long line and had him put another slip lead, hand me the slip lead so I can control the left and right. And he, he, you know, the back tie would do the, the front and back. And as soon as I grabbed the, the, the leash, he just like retreated. And I was like, okay, this is different from last time. Uh, and so he had a muzzle on because, you know, he has a bite history. Um, but then I just so they will handle him, and, like just kind of move with them. And, and uh, we, got, we got somewhere with him, but he still needs this guy. He was avoidant of me the entire time. You know, I had a trainer send me something one time of a Belgian he was working with. And it was the dog you mentioned at the beginning. And it was a really front dog. I could in the video you could see it. And the guy was taking it through all these training paces. I go, dude, you got another couple of days, then this dog's going to be done with you. And that of you, if you go and look at the video, it's fully avoiding you, but it's going through the paces. Yeah, and like that's the same thing. And that ability to understand what it looks like when they connect with you, and when they that the look in the eyes and the expression and the way certain things will will move into place when they look at you, or the absence of the fact that you'll be with them for a certain amount of time. You know, one of the easiest forms of avoidance too that I see people miss is the high, I, I always, it's like I have all these files in my head, kind of like the high achiever owner that goes to a lot of training classes mm-hmm. and they do a lot of, you know, verbal, hey, sit, sit, 
And what they don't recognize is like every time they give a command, the dog will sit an oriental way mm-hmm. or the dog, you know what I'm saying? So that they give a dog direction and they don't see, just like in that video, that little video clip, if you go back and you guys get the opportunity to watch it, what I want you to watch is the timing, the timing of the ladies talking to what the action of the dogs is. And we see this a lot where you see somebody give a verbal direction and the dog physically does it and then orients away. Or as they're walking, the dog is oriented like a, a certain orientation away. And those are avoidance uh, indicators. So, I mean, if you're an owner and you're listening to this and you have these things, what it means is the dog is a combination of things to me is the programming and the coding's wrong. Your direction is actually triggering this away. But to me, it's generated more by the internal energy of, of that need to be in verbal control. Yeah. As, you know what I mean? I think the dogs really get programmed to, to ignore that. And the people that use it a lot end up with very little control. It kind of goes to that thing I did or, you know, talked about where you can get to here. You, the dog and the human are in this nice little perfect relationship. But the people that keep trying, you just keep mm. back, go right back in the same spot of disconnect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. it's, and that's what I mean by the high achiever. You get these owners that really mean well. They want to do right, but they try too hard. Yeah. And, and in trying too hard, it creates like this, um, this tension or it creates, to me, it's like the overbearing parent. And it, and it makes the dog be like, oh, that's, that's your plan, man, not mine. Mm. You know, and then the more they do it, the more they create it. And it's a, it's a tricky one. That's a tricky avoidance because it's connected level. It's like on a, it's, it's woven in to the, the, the relationship. It's so fascinating. There's something else I was going to talk about, but I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah, tell me about it. Me too, dude. That's what happens at nine in the morning or nine thirty. <laughs> But that, I think that's the thing that over time that I've always been fascinated about because I, I understood behavior to some extent. I mean, I had a degree in psychology before I got started with dogs and I've always, I've always enjoyed observing behavior like in just anything. And people, um, we have these sandhill cranes, man, and, and you should see the way that they operate with space and they, you can see the, the, the teaching format behind the way they teach the little ones to get food and all these things. And it's interesting how you can see the same thing in people and how I've always said it's like watching people through glass. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier about avoidance. You know, calm avoidance is okay. If you're walking down the street, your dog doesn't need to look at everything. They can right. surrender to you and calmly avoid everything else. It's like when you ride public transportation. Everybody should be like in a a, a calm avoidance state, right. more or less of everybody else. I don't want to interact with you. I don't. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to interact with me, but we'll calmly respect each other that we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, and shit, what was I saying before that? See, you just got me. You just... <laughs> Yeah, see, but, well, I'll just add on. To, I'll just, I'll, can I add on to that because yeah, you're talking absolutely. about public transportation? That's one of the examples that I tell people is that um, avoidance is not totally bad. Yeah. Uh, because like when you go to the airport and you sit in, or airplane, like you're avoiding somebody. You're not fighting them. You're not running away from them. Right? Yeah. You're not fight or flight. You're avoiding them. Uh, but if they try to start, strike up a conversation, you can continue to avoid them, or you can accept it and start a conversation with them, or or they continue. touch you. Oh, yeah, then no. But see, that's what I'm saying. That's, how, that's that fine line. And that's why a lot of people don't recognize, you know, we inadvertently want our dogs to be social with every other dog. I don't know if owners really are conscious of that, but a lot of people are like, I can't believe my dog doesn't like that dog. And it's like, well, you know, your dog does have dog friends. It's not like your dog's trying to assassinate dogs. That's one thing. I get that. But dogs are socially selective. You know, we're not wired, even as humans, we're not wired to live in these giant metropolitan groups. We're wired to live in these more communal sized groups, right? Yeah. Where in dogs are not designed to live in a dog park sized group. And so th- that is interesting that we expect this acceptance of all these other social energies. But for us, you know, dogs are introverted, extroverted, so to speak. Uh, avoid- avoidance is, um, <laughs> it's interesting to watch. I'm gonna, I have an avoidant personality. You know, you sit down with any counselor and start talking. They, this is one of the first things they start to talk about is your attachment with your mom and, you know, some of, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it goes into it and you cope with these things. Yeah. I, I was going to do a post on this. I had a client over the weekend and this always goes back to where I try to explain to people. You know, I think the first thing people say now, one of the most common things we, we now know, and, and part of it's because of the Caesar and the dog whisper way back is, I know it's me. So that's a great thing to hear. I know it's me. All right, perfect. We don't have to convince you it's coming from the human. And then I'll go, do you know what part? You're like, do you know what part of you it is? How, what does that mean? It's me. 
So I had this lady over the weekend and I said, I'm explaining, I go, so really what I want you to understand guys is there's a mechanical side to this. And then there's your emotions. One's kind of easy to break down one, maybe not, not so much. And here's how it works together. Let's, I go, let's say I ask you to ignore your dogs at certain times. So I go, and the reason I'm asking you to ignore it is because we're actually ignoring this particular behavior that your dog is practicing. Maybe they're being pushy, maybe they're whining at you, but I'm going to ask you to ignore it, right? So that's the, the technical part. Now, the technical reason is that I do not want you to reinforce this behavior. I go, however, I don't know how your emotions are going to take this. So if I ask you to ignore this dog, for some people, it's going to hurt. It's going to make you feel bad for different reasons. And this lady goes, on cue, open. This was what was great. She goes, yep. When I was little, I didn't get what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I, I would feel bad. And now I don't want my dogs to ever feel like I felt when I was little. So mm -hmm. I give them everything when they want. I go, yo, I, thank you. Exactly. Yeah. So now what we were able to talk about is that there's going to be certain parts of this that are going to be a challenge yeah. and it's okay that it's a challenge. I'm not trying to ask you to feel different. I just want you to recognize what you do in this moment. And what was interesting as we continued the appointment, then, then we would come to a moment where I would talk about something else and she would be like, bam, bam. I'm like, there you go, there you you go have, again. <laughs> right? You have that energy, that energy's there. I go, let's just move that energy like a, you know, almost like a chess piece over here. Yeah. I go, cause you have it. And that's the thing that when people say, you know, I know it's me, I don't think they realize how much of every part of us it is. Like your dog is just here to show you what you need. Really, or, if your what dog you need, did, or what you need to work on. Well, yeah, I, what you need to work on, what you need to be a, a better human, because they don't care about anything other than the state of mind you live in. Really. Yeah, I think when people say like, "Oh," and you know, we get it all the time, like, oh, "Wow, I'm, I'm the problem," <laughs> and I, but I'm like, "Yes," and you're also the solution. You know, and so, so my plan is always like, okay, how can we make you the solution? Let's make you the solution. So it's not just like, yeah, I'm the problem. Because if you just leave them, leave them stuck there, you don't do them any, any, you know, you do them a disservice by just leaving them there, you know? Yes, you admitted that, but all, yes, and you also are the solution. And so, um, you know, I think kids also do that, by the way, like they kind of bring out the, not the worst in you, but also the, the things that you need to work on. Steve and I, after we did the podcast last week, Steve and I stayed on, I know you had to leave. Uh, we, and we talked about that actually, because he was starting to say that, he started to realize why in certain areas of his life um, he was angry. I don't want to, you know, you know yeah. give him too much details, uh, you know, kind of personal our, our conversation, but, you know, but it get, went back to his childhood. Like he was, he discovered that these things and these events in his life in his childhood came up in other areas of his life and things that he dealt with with his parents. And the fact that he came to that realization is so huge and powerful. And me too, by the way, I'm, Steve's not the only one. There's some things that, that I have discovered that have kind of come to the surface about certain things that weren't met when I was a kid or not heard. You know what I mean? Well, and, you know, to me, the, when I, when I, we had our daughter and I would see my parents, um, parenting her, like, you know, like I would watch my parents with her. What, what I was seeing was them parenting me. Mm, yeah. And that's where you really start to, you, you can really start to the window of, like you just said, why certain things are, are there can open up. Now, I'm also a big fan of, and you know, this just came out in a, in a book where I think it's important to recognize influences and, mm -hmm. and use the information as needed and then let it go and move forward. Because it, I, I, I think it's real easy to, we, to stay stuck. I just saw a reel from, you know, Tony Robbins. And he's like, look around your room. How many brown things do you see? Look around your room. How many red things? You know, you start to, you, you see what you see, what you're looking for. And, and I think it's important that we can recognize that we're, you know, the way we are from the things that happen um, and make the changes, but, but then leave that part, make sure that we can accept it. And, but yeah, it's crazy, dude. And having kids does it. There's some, I mean, I, Dude, some of the things that I remember feeling and, and going through and experiencing, it's crazy. And, and yeah. the dif difference with kids, it seems like, and, and you know, dogs give us instant feedback. You can tell if you're getting it right or wrong really quick with a dog. Yeah. You got years. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's years in between if you're going to recognize if you got it right or wrong. And if, if you don't ever have the game of adjustments, you just, it, it sucks. At least what we have in our, in our world is the ability to adjust, the ability to see that something's not working the ability to make a change and accept that it it's me 
You know, I, I can't stand it when people are like, oh, the dog's not getting it. Oh, the kid's not getting it. Well, I blame, it, I blame, it, I blame Taylor Swift, by the way, because she has a song. It's me. Something. I'm the problem. It's me. Between Frozen and Taylor Swift, dude, my daughter has kept, you know, that, that industry. Oh, man. Boy, I uh, love Frozen, she's by the way. Pretty I'm positive, pretty positive role model for girls. I mean, for the most part, she's, you know, it, it it's kind of cool. I mean, look at what, what somebody has, has been able to accomplish. I mean, the, the, to build something that – changing economy, yeah. you know what I mean? To, to have enough wherewithal to, like, take your music and move it from one – um, distribution process and create your own version of it and remake it so they can be like, nope, that's not yours, it's mine. And then get all your fans to be like, yeah, fuck you, and move over here. It's, you know, it's, she's, it's, it's a, could be worse, dude. Could be worse. Like wet ass pussy, you know, is oh number one. And everybody's like celebrating that. So, you know what I mean? It's, uh, could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. How do we go? How do we, how do we start talking about this? Well, it got it, it moved into like kids. You were talking about oh, how right, you know yeah. there was Steve was being reflective on how and it started because I have a client and this is really I think it's people can give it a little bit more thought. Like I had a client that was just straight up, hey. And the thing that his or her dogs were really anxious because they were highly spoiled. We've talked about this before. Spoiled energy will create anxiety. And it's I think if you can recognize why you're doing it, we can you can still spoil your dog. You can still fulfill that side of your need. You just have to have different timing. You know, I constantly say I spoil calm dogs, right? Nice. I get, I give my dogs everything they want. Do you remember Olivia? Of course, we've talked about Olivier. Uh, you know, I remember when he was a student um, at TCW because I think he's a child psychologist who became he starts to work with dogs now. Um, one of the things that we talked about is we had a student that was also in our group, and and, and she was talking about how. You know, like she was spoiled as a kid, like, you know, her, her dad, even to this day, like kind of spoils her and she's like in her thirties. And I remember Olivier like came to me, he goes, I don't think she realized that being spoiled is, is actually trauma. Like she's dealing with her trauma. He said that to me. It was one of the most profound things I'd heard in one sentence, dude. Yeah. Yep. And I, was I, said, like, I said, I, cause you know what, after that, our, something to the conversation, I said, oh, I thought there was trauma. It was spoiled. And he goes, being spoiled is trauma. And yeah. Maybe, maybe you were there in that same conversation with me because my yeah. mind was like, oh, shit, I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, look at dogs. I've never seen a dog that was spoiled. And by spoiled, I'll define it. Spoiled to me is giving your dog anything they want, no matter how they're asking. And the brain becomes limitlessly spinning, right? Because it never learns to ask with anything but excitement. And then that turns anxiety and then you reinforce that. So you end up basically spoiling a dog, creates excitement, pushy, then anxiety, and then you just keep going. I've never seen a five, six year old, seven year old spoiled dog that's not, <laughs> yeah, you know, hot spots. They they can't digest their food. <laughs> overweight, it's overweight. That's what I'm saying. Is it's 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 a tangible. The dog physically, tangibly shows you what it looks like. Yeah. I can't be around those dogs very long. It's like I, I have to get it out when I'm done, and and so that's you got to work. That on is it. traumatic. <laughs> you know, they're they're a dog is not designed to have that yeah they're designed to have to go a day in between eating at times they're designed to chase their food down or go find their food they're designed to wait they're designed to be respectful they're designed and if they're not if they don't have to be respectful that means they're giving rules to everybody so they always know their role their role is not to have limitless anything yeah yes and just kidding <laughs> yes and Oh, is that, that's the, uh, yeah. That's from like, I think they do that in improv, I think. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Improv. Yes, yes and. and. So, yes, and. I, I always wanted to do improv, but I never got around to do it. I did a uh, the comedy house here in Dallas. They have like a, you know, stand-up comedy classes. And I actually did a storytelling class because I wanted to get like really good at storytelling. Um, and and then you, at the end, you have to like perform, do your performance at the end. You look uh, like Mr. Ballin right now. Who's that? You ever seen him? He's like, he's got a huge following on all the social media channels. He tells like crazy stories. He's an ex Navy SEAL. Always wears a flannel shirt. Has his hat on backwards like that. No, looks I gotta just, check him out. That yeah, looks pretty fun. Like I'm, right now, anyways, you look kind of like. I'm all about the the Navy SEALs. There's a guy that I know here in Dallas um, called uh, Garrett Uncle Bach. He has a podcast called The Impossible Life. It's pretty cool, by the way. And he talks about like, you know, when he he was like the youngest Navy SEAL to go through buds and like completed. And he has this whole story how like. 
everyone thought that he wasn't going to complete it. But he was like, oh, I, I know it's going to happen because I've already vis- envisioned it. And he was like, and when I'm done, I'm going to run on the beach by myself. And, you know, after Bud's training, you're kind of like just tore up and like you have to go to get med check and all sorts of stuff. He finished it and ran on the beach by himself. Just like he said he was going to do it. Power of intention, right? Yeah. Well, that was what was that was saying in that little clip that um, you you get what you see, and you know I you have this conversation with the clients all the time. I'm sure is that I think one of the biggest differences between what I'm experiencing and the clients experiencing is I'm seeing what I want it to look like. Yeah. Because I, I don't have a, you know a thousand repetitions of this under my belt, and my brain's not scarred by this whole experience and. Like, you know, on autoplay, you know, and I know what it's going to look like. The dog's going to lunge. I'm going to pull. The dog's going to bark, you know? Yeah. And so that, that you start to project that. I mean, it becomes, it becomes uh, the chicken or the egg. And it, and it is, it's so predictable. Yeah. And uh, I actually had a video of this because I know you don't see my stuff because uh, you have like over 100,000 followers now. So you're like Mr. Superstar status. So I know you don't see my stuff. But there's, there's a, I, and I also know you've never seen this movie because I just know you've never seen this movie. I have. It's called The Notebook with uh, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. <laughs> and so, uh, anyways, uh, there's, this, there's this scene in there where they're like, he's like telling her, what do you want? And she's like, it's not that easy. He's like, what do you want? And I actually made a video on this on my social media about like, that's exactly what I tell, ask people. What do you want? Like, yeah. what do you want? What do you want to see? What, what do you want? want? No, don't focus on the things you don't want. What do you want? It's, that, that, is the, that is very underrated. It's not magic. I mean, but it is... It is part of the process of the way it's going to work. It's very difficult to create something you can't see, right? So if you're only seeing whatever the negative outcome is, it's very difficult for you to create the other outcome. If that's all you can see, it's hard no matter what we tell you. You know, you're, it's changing something's difficult. Well, it going takes back to the change. very first video we saw, like, she's not very clear what she wants. The husband was very clear on what he wanted. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, and it wasn't it, – for people watching or listening, it wasn't his tone. It's a couple of things. We, I can fundamentally tell he has a different association with those dogs in regards to quote-unquote listening. You know, so that, those dogs have walked towards him many more times than they've walked towards her. And so they're, they're, that is just fundamentally there. And they he, – maybe he's gone in and physically pulled them out of the pool before. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he's made that sound and they've jumped in the pool and he, and his next step was to go in and get him, you know. So it's hard to say, but we know that it it she is not following in the same steps. Nope. <laughs> Hi, man. I think I'm done for today. All right, Mr. Ballin. <laughs> now I want you to text me his Instagram. I want, I want to check it out. How do you All spell right. it? Uh, uh, Mr. B A L L E N. Go to YouTube. He's got because he's got full length videos on YouTube. Cool. I'll check it out. All right, man. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much. And by the way, Todd, uh, when I was at the workshop, we had so many people come up to me and says, "I love the podcast." So there's a lot of people who are actually listening, which I'm really excited about. Like, I, like people just come up to me or send me messages. People I don't even know. So thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and you know, people I again I've never even met That's before. Great. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for listening, everybody. I appreciate that. At the that. workshop, so many people came up to me and said, I really love the podcast. It's like my favorite podcast. We can't wait till it comes out. I, I got that a lot, Todd. So, All right. It's really well, cool. we'll keep them coming then. If you guys want, you know, those, those listening, send us videos or ideas or questions that you may have. I think one of the things that I th- would be a cool idea, Art, is to maybe bring somebody on that needs help. And let us do a, a, a little Ooh. breakdown of how we can help them. You offer a couple of you know insights from what you think. I'll offer a couple of insights from what I think. If you have a little video, it makes it even easier. Maybe just a situation like where you're trying to get your dog to do something or to stop doing something. And we can make it more real for people so they can um, take some I love tips. that idea. Okay. I love that. I think it's a good idea. All right, All right. guys. Uh, thank you, River. All right. I'll talk to you later, Todd. All right, guys. Uh, See you, man.